All right, so let's talk about media. So we have all kinds of wiring. You know, the, we, we still do, there's still a lot of copper wire out there doing RS-232 and RS-485, particularly within a site. You know, if I go to a well site and I've got you know, two devices and I need to hook them up, there's still a lot of this being done. There's, of course, radio. There's satellite. There's lease lines. Um, we've got other kinds of communications that would be carrier-based communications like cable and, you know, cellular and all these various kinds of communication. <clears throat> so most of our communications is wireless, and this is really kind of what our show at Intellect is a lot about. There's a lot of people here that are gurus, way more knowledgeable than me about wireless communication. So this is actually a chart. You can go to the internet, you can download this, you can print it up as a big poster and put it on the wall. It's kind of cool. What it tells you is for all the various spectrum, who owns it? Everything from you know, very long wave communications used by the military to NASA to microwave you know, communications used for energy weapons. All that spectrum's here. So all RF communications is line of sight, meaning the two antennas have to see one another, right? When I have low frequency, long wavelength, what happens with those kinds of communications is they can't move a whole lot of data because data is correlated to wavelength or frequency, right? So the more waves I have, the more data I can carry because each one, each one of those waves represents a, a, a bit, a zero, a one or a zero, right? When I have long waves, I'll bounce them. I, when I was a kid, I had a neighbor who was a ham radio operator and he was real proud, proud of the fact that he had used his ham radio to talk to a submarine in the Indian Ocean by bouncing things off of, you know, bouncing waves off the stratosphere halfway around the world. So, anyways, so the, the, the big thing to know about this is all RF is point to point. There's different kinds of point to point. Uh, most of the spread spectrum radios, those are canopies, which means a master antenna and lots of radio antennas around it, where microwave would be point to point, kind of an, a wire in the air, if that's making sense. All right, so just some general things. In general, the radios we use are gonna be able to get about 23 kilometers from a master site out to a remote site. Now you can, there's things you can do to extend this and everybody's a little different. I'm trying to give you some rules of thumb. But I can cover a canopy that's about a 30 kilometer radius. I can also put in repeaters. So I can go 30 kilometers and put a repeater in and then go another distance from the repeater. But there's problems with that potentially. When I go through a repeater, if it's only got one antenna, I'm actually taking my bandwidth and cutting it in half because I've got to receive the message, process it, and transmit it. So I double my communications time. Unless I've got two, you know, unless I've got two antennas and I'm fully synchronous. We, uh, this is kind of dated. So analog radios, historically, and there's still a bunch of these out there. I mean, there are a bunch of people running licensed radios that are doing 9,600 baud, and they're doing really well with 9,600 baud radio systems. When I get these older radio systems and I have licensed that spectrum and I've built the tower infrastructure, it's real hard to get rid of them because the capital investment is huge. So once I get something in and it's working, I tend to run with it for a very long time before I replace it. The other thing about these older analog radios, you know, those waves are about yay long, so they'll tend to go through the trees. On the spread spectrum radios, those waves are about that long. You know, what's, what does that length look like? 
It's about the length of a pine needle in East Texas. And pine trees in East Texas just love to gobble up RF signal. Because in effect, I've got an antenna there that's gobbling up those waves. Is this making sense? So again, I'm, I'm, what I'm getting at here is that these radio systems have to be engineered to work well. All right. So this is just a picture of a UHF and a VHF um, TV antenna. When you look at those spreaders, those spreaders are about the wavelength, right? So... You know, I've got to engineer the antenna to the radio to the spectrum I'm working in. All right, so most of the spread spectrum radios are one watt radios and one watt to transmit and probably a tenth of a watt to stand by. So they consume a lot less power than the older licensed radios. So one of the reasons they proliferated is not only were they less expensive to just procure, but you didn't need as much, you didn't need as much infrastructure to put them in and have them run well. Okay. So this is kind of an example of a topology for radio communications in a SCADA system. The next thing I want to talk about is microwave. So microwave so, so if I'm trying to take my business network and I want to extend it into my field operations, I'm probably going to do that with a microwave backbone. So microwaves, somewhat more expensive than these other radio types. You can get up to 10 gigabit now on some microwave backbones. Um, and you can get... When you get these set up, it's kind of like having a local area network in the office because I can move, I can move video, I can move my email, you know, they're, they're IP natively. Now you've got some issues with security and such, but they're IP na natively. They require towers because I got to get them up above things, right? And they require land use permits and they need ground facilities. They need power, they need air conditioning, they need a building, right? So the cost of this stuff is substantially more than other kinds of radios. All right, so this is an example. So what would typically happen in, so this is an example of a microwave network. So what typically happen is I would take at those endpoints and I would put a, older style master radio behind the microwave and that's how I reach out to the remote sites. So I use the microwave as a backbone. It's a backhaul, right? But I still use the field data radios to actually communicate with the devices in the field. Now, what would happen if this microwave goes down? Pardon? Exactly, I can't get to anything behind it, right? It's like I broke the wire, okay? So what a lot of people will do is they'll actually add a connection and go here. So now it's a ring, and what happens if I lose that microwave? You still talk to everybody, right? Now that can be challenging depending on, you know, the reality of this is when I go out to my field, I don't find pipelines that are in rings, Pipelines tend to be straight runs in my experience, right? Now, if I'm putting in a production field, I might be able to put a ring backbone in. But again, so there's, there's lots that goes into this from a redundancy and reliability standpoint. The next kind of communication is satellite communications. So satellite, the beauty of wireless as well, point to point as well. The beauty of satellite is what you're pointing at is up. So I can get satellite communications any place on the globe. So I can establish communications any place on the globe with satellite. What I've seen a lot of people do if they're, you know, if they're opening up a new project or they're developing a new field, they might start with satellite communications because it's easy to get in and get started. And then over time, as they get bigger and they can justify it economically, they'll start building other kinds of infrastructure. I don't have a chart on this. Um, well, there's two kinds of satellites. So there's LEOS 
and geosynchronous. Okay, so geosynchronous is fixed point in the sky. Leos is a fleet of satellites and they're rotating, right? So your satellite TV at the house, that's geosync. That's why if you go up on the roof and you point it a little better, you get a better signal. Your GPS in your phone, that's Leos because it's accumulating multiple satellites, triangulating, and using that to determine where you are in three-dimensional space. 